This talk is about the simplest known construct in geometry, abstract finite simplicial complexes. There's only one axiom. We have a finite set of non-empty sets, which is closed under the operation of taking non-empty subsets. Now, if you think about Euclidean realizations, we always remain within combinatorics. The construct is due to two remarkable mathematicians, Max Steen and Paul Hegart. Both were highly creative mathematicians, had a wide range of interests in art, astronomy, and value teaching. Thinking about our sets of sets is not so intuitive. Also, Euclidean realizations become more difficult to explain in higher dimensions. We therefore often use the language of graphs, a concept which makes sense also without notions of algebraic topology. Every set defines a vertex, and two sets are connected if one is contained in the other. A subclass of complexes are d-complexes, graphs for which every unit sphere is a d-1 sphere. A d-sphere is just a d-graph which becomes contractible after a single point is removed, and chromatology is interesting for such graphs. General belief is that every two complexes, chromatic number 3, 4, or 5, that every d-sphere uh, uh, can be colored with 3 plus d plus 2 colors. The reason for these conjectures is uh, geometric. We can write the graph as a boundary of a large dimensional space, then color the inside uh, by uh, doing subdivisions, uh, make the graph inside uh, uh, have the chromatic number 4. It's also the boundary will have the chromatic number 4. This is a constructive uh, 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 thing which has not yet been kind of established to be uh, converging all the time, and uh, but it gives confidence that uh, the graph is just work. Uh, geometric graphs are everywhere. If you look at the real surface and capture it, for example here, captured something with a smartphone, uh, submitted it to a, a 3D uh, app, and uh, got the Simplicio complex back and 3D printed it. Uh, this is from the uh, Rhode Island School of Design. And uh, it produced a beautiful two-sphere, which is for colorable. Uh, complexes are interesting when linear algebra uh, is used to uh, describe it. Here's a 0, 1 matrix, which is uh, 1 if two sets uh, intersect and it's 0 else. n simplices, an n times n matrix. It is amazing that this matrix is unimodular. The inverse has integer entries. And uh, it is the adjacency graph of adjacency matrix of a graph, a 1 plus the adjacency matrix of a graph, the connection graph of G. If you think of the energies uh, g, x, y as potential energies between uh, the two simplices, the motivation is to look at the total energy. This comes from physics. And remarkably, this is the Euler characteristic of the complex. A week ago, I started to look at the dual matrix where the zeros and ones are reversed and uh, just experimented a little bit. Uh, the Euler characteristic or the eigenvalues of the matrix L bar, L minus 1, is very interesting. And this follows from the uh, energy theorem. There's more experiments I'm doing right now. I don't know what is actually going to happen. The matrix L, L bar, for example, has always just two or three positive eigenvalues. All the other eigenvalues are negative. I don't understand this yet. Uh, for the, for the uh, matrix L, the number of positive eigenvalues minus the number of negative eigenvalues is the Euler characteristic. So you can hear the Euler characteristic, and let's do that here. So there is an animation which builds up the uh, Simplicial complex as a CW complex. We attach more and more cells, with a Morse uh, cell complex, and every time we have uh, more, uh, we add more eigen, eigenvalues and also add more, uh, make the sound more complex. Every time a positive dimensional simplex is added, we add a positive eigenvalue and otherwise a negative one. Uh, for one dimensional complexes, there is a spectral symmetry. So uh, this is best explained with a zeta function. So the zeta function of a Laplacian is the sum of the eigenvalues to the minus s. So if we take the eigenvalues of L squared so that we have a positive, positive eigenvalues. Uh, that's the functional equation. And uh, there is another interesting uh, relation in one dimensions that L minus L minus 1 is uh, the signless Hodge Laplacian 
So it's related to something which has to do with cohomology, while L is not cohomological. The green function entries can be exp explicitly given. So the characteristic of the intersection of the stars, x and y, and if we think about them as unstable manifolds, intersection of unstable manifolds, and uh, it's a nice formula. Uh, about barycentric uh, refinements, it's a, it produces an interesting dynamical system. We get from a complex a new complex, and we can iterate this process. Uh, the combinatorics is uh, pretty well understood. There is a matrix, a universal matrix, which tells how the f vector uh, grows. And uh, uh, when we do it in one dimension, uh, we can ask already what is the what is the limit? Is it the uh, but it's not in the case of the circular graph. It's not the circle as the limit. It's the it's the dyadic group of integers. It's a profinite group. And uh, one can understand this by using ergodic theory by doing integral extensions of a dynamical system. So that's what the barycentric refinement uh, 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 leads to. And then this system has a unique fixed point in the space of measure preserving transformation, which is a norm of periodic system with group translation on that uh, the other group of integers. Uh, in two dimensions also we can refine, or in three dimensions we can uh, refine. Then we can look at the eigenvalues of the uh, operator and see how it changes and how what the spectrum behaves and it always converges it just depends on the dimension uh, there's a universal limiting measure it's kind of a central limit theorem in one dimension we understand it completely uh, the eigenvalues uh, converge nicely in two dimensions also but uh, there we don't understand what is really going on there is a there's a spectral uh, gap or several spectral gaps it looks contour set like and, uh, but it's a, it's a nice uh, uh, limit, this barycentric limit. We get the compact space with the smallest translation unit. It's accessible by ergodic theory. And also the zeta function is very nice, tame. There is no kind of uh, interesting number theory also behind because the dual group of the, of the, the other group of integers is not uh, is divisible. It doesn't have primes. <clears throat> the other characteristic about the other characteristic, it's the very nice uh, uh, counting uh, function on simply zero complexes. It's essentially unique. So if you look at the uh, 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 quantity which is invariant of the barycentric refinement, there's only one eigenvector to the eigenvalue one of this uh, barycentric refinement operator. And it's also homotopy invariant, this other characteristic. If you have some hairs coming out of a sphere, these hairs can be taken away, and it's the same other characteristic. So uh, it belongs to a d plus one dimensional space of valuations. This is in the continuum has been has been studied by Hugo Hadwiger as a Hadwiger theorem, and in the discrete, it's uh, 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 also this integral geometry matters, and it's uh, Dan Klein and uh, Rota uh, Galo Rota have has has have uh, generalized this or uh, re re translated this into the discrete. Here's some classical theorems. So what is a nice theorem? A theorem is nice if it has a left-hand side and the right-hand side, and these two sides are the same. And it's not so obvious that they are the same. Uh, so here are some theorems. I'm not going into them. They're described elsewhere. They are uh, uh, of this type. If a left-hand side, the right-hand side, it's not obvious that the left-hand side is the right-hand side. Uh, uh, here are some more theorems. They mirror classical theorems. Uh, uh, riemann roch is only in one dimension. This is a, a bacon uh, theory. <clears throat> uh, now there's a connection calculus, kind of a different type of calculus when you look, instead of the Euler characteristic, you look at the quadratic valuation, which is the Wu characteristic. It's the only barycentric invariant valuation, quadratic one, and uh, it is uh, uh, has been started first time 60 years ago, not so much. Uh, I actually, uh, 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 here you see a, a graph, the uh, Avicii graph, just sadly died. And in that, in that case already we have uh, 387 interactions just to calculate that that invariant. Uh, but when one understands this, kind of, if you make a barycentric refinement, you get a, a graph which is a kind of a Euclidean ball with boundary and for that, there is a formula which is the other characteristic of the interior of the whole graph minus the other characteristic of the of the boundary. In this case, it's minus minus one. And so there is a you now a calculus. There is a classical calculus, the 
which deals with uh, other characteristics. It has a connection calculus, which deals with uh, Wu characteristic. And uh, one can do everything you can do also here. So you can look at uh, Stokes' theorem, you can look at uh, uh, physics, you can look at the uh, Maxwell equation or whatever you want to uh, want, want to do. So here is the, uh, the exterior derivative in that uh, in that uh, calculus, uh, gradient, curl, and then you can s square them, you get the Laplacian, Hodge Laplacian, and the nullity of these blocks are uh, the Betty numbers, these are the cohomology, and this cohomology adds up super sums to the to the whole characteristic. It can be computed pretty quickly. I have only the code here for the cohomology of a simplicity simplicity cohomology in six lines. Take a simplicity complex, feed it into Mathematica and you get out the basis of the of the uh, cohomology. Uh, the the quadratic cohomology is, is 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 a little bit about twice as long. And you can do physics, you can do the wave equation, you can do nonlinear wave equation like the Lux deformation of the exterior derivative. And uh, uh, the cohomology allows to distinguish objects like the cylinder and Möbius strip uh, are cohomologically different for this quadratic uh, cohomology, but it's uh, it's the same under the simplicity cohomology because they are homotopic to a circle. So it is uh, 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 it's, a, it's an interesting uh, uh, thing to study. And this is the end.